I like this phone. It's pretty cool. All right, folks, it's impossible to review this phone without making it something of a comparison against the OnePlus 6. Instead of just a linear improvement to the device or a radical change in screen aspect ratio, the 6T trades more features with the OnePlus 6. They are pretty similar, and you can get a solid grasp on what the 6T has to offer looking back at my review of the OnePlus 6. Uh, that said, I do think it's overly simplistic to just say we're swapping a headphone jack for an in-screen fingerprint sensor. There are a few other things happening here, but it's understandable that most people fixate on those changes they're the most noticeable. The core of this device, OnePlus delivers one of the best performers of the year. This phone is a hot rod, which easily hangs with, <laughs> mostly surpasses gadgets that cost significantly more. Great UI performance, great gaming performance, it's great. The first hardware design change, a smaller notch is nicer. It's less intrusive, less disruptive, but it's still a notch. I hope this is the last year we have to suffer molested screens. With an in-display fingerprint sensor, we should have more options to deal with the selfie camera at the top of the phone, or maybe just get rid of the inferior front camera entirely and add a second screen to the back for selfies and video calls. I'm just spitballing. And we need to talk about the fingerprint sensor. It's not gimmicky, it does work, but it has a few concerns. Thankfully, recent updates from OnePlus have improved speed and accuracy over the mess we had at launch. When I land the right spot, the phone unlocks well enough, even if it's not as snappy as, say, a Huawei hardware sensor. To that point, though, the front of the phone is featureless, and the target window is a touch small, so it takes some muscle memory to land it without looking. Don't let your thumb linger, and most of the time, it's a responsive unlock. A small pain point for me, I can't can't find a setting to enable a tactile response. The phone will make an audio click when it unlocks if you have system sounds on, but I'd prefer a buzz or a vibration to alert me instead. I prefer fingerprint sensors over face scanning for my on-the-go use, having the device ready to go before I ever hold it up to my face. I wish I had that kind of conveyance here where I used to have it on the fingerprint sensor for the OnePlus 6. It's also worth mentioning smudges on your screen or third-party screen protectors will impact this performance. I wanna give OnePlus kudos here for using a cooler, techier solution, but similar to Apple and Face ID, it does seem to come with just a bit more user management or behavioral adjustment than I would prefer. Another significant change, a positive change over the 6, the 6T gets a 12% bump to battery capacity, which delivers a nice little bump to runtime. I had no issues making it past dinner time on the OnePlus 6, and now I have more headroom into the evening. And hypermiling it for a weekend, I made it to a full day and a half of light use, but was dumb and forgot to get a screen grab of that battery stat, but I did it. I did do that thing. When you combine that kind of performance with the dash charger, which comes in the box, you get excellent power management. And I didn't much miss wireless charging, but flipping back, the audio situation is a bit of a bummer. A built-in headphone jack is just more convenient, and since I like to play games on my phones, I liked being able to charge and use cabled headphones at the same time on my OnePlus 6. I have a separate video taking a closer look at audio performance, and I also reviewed the OnePlus USB-C bullets. Between the dongle, the bullets, and Bluetooth, we have good options but I'm still cranky that OnePlus went from being one of the best headphone solutions to being average for all the companies getting rid of this super useful jack. And you'll have to pardon me in this review getting a bit more philosophical about OnePlus as a company, especially looking at the changes from the OnePlus 6 to the 6T, because one of the major aspects of this phone is really more the evolution of carrier partnerships in the United States. The obvious one, having a proper distribution relationship with T-Mobile. Now, I use Project Fi, but that mostly means I default to T-Mobile, and I've had great service in my area. Now we have a phone that handily competes with much more expensive flagship handsets and with better trade-in and financing options. That's a huge opportunity for OnePlus to leverage T-Mobile's PR, floor space, and financing support. 
If anything can move the needle on a Chinese manufacturer making a splash in North America, this is it. The other potentially exciting upgrade, OnePlus now has better support for Verizon. I don't have a Verizon SIM, but I did speak with a Verizon rep, and there's a small catch. OnePlus certainly did not include a CDMA radio just to support Verizon in the USA. That would be an expensive add-on for just one carrier in one country. When you do get through the hoops at Verizon billing to activate this phone, it will be an LTE only device. And that's fine if you live in good LTE coverage, but if you have to fall back on Verizon CDMA, like I occasionally have had to do in the Valley, the OnePlus might be flakier there. Still, this nicely addresses a potential issue for Verizon subscribers that might have wanted to take one of these phones out for a spin. Lastly, OnePlus software is such a happy balance between stock and other manufacturer skins. Uh, little things like a magnifying glass pop-up on the keyboard when you're scrubbing through text. The interesting thing is seeing several different options for navigation controls and gestures. OnePlus led with some gestures before Android Pie was released, but now we can choose between the Pie Pill, home swiping and back button, we can use traditional home, back and multitasking buttons, and we can also use an all gesture based system. Now, I still have some issues with tall skinny phones requiring a bottom swipe gesture that has to pull from the chin. Mostly because I'm a creature of habit, I tend to stick with traditional navigation buttons. I have to shift the phone in my hand to reach the bottom edge anyway, so a light tap on a button is still easier and more efficient than shifting the phone and then swiping or swiping, pausing, and sliding to multitask. If you want to switch quickly between two apps, no gesture lands anywhere near as quickly as a light button tap. I know gestures will be the future, especially for tall, skinny screens, a future with foldable phones and different aspect ratios and form factors, but I just don't think they're here yet. We do need to start replacing bottom docked buttons uh, but I think bottom docked buttons still do the job better. All right, that's enough cranky rambling from me. Where's that leave us with the OnePlus 6T? Well, if you have a OnePlus 6, you're good, you're fine. You probably don't need to upgrade. If you're shopping from an older OnePlus, you were considering T-Mobile's support, I love the idea of a one phone manufacturer. Whenever you buy into the OnePlus ecosystem, you buy the phone that's out and that's the best they have to offer. Every six months, you can count on them refreshing something. That's really simple. On the surface, the OnePlus 6T definitely doesn't feel like the same kind of exciting improvement we've gotten from T phones in years past. A lot of this is going to be a lateral move hinging on a couple tech pieces being traded between the two phones released this year. But that doesn't mean there aren't some important upgrades. A battery bump, a carrier partnership, and support for a long neglected carrier are important differentiators to the United States market. We used to write off mid-rangers saying, you get 85% of the phone for half the cost. That could be just as much a compliment as it could also be a deal breaker depending on the tone of the reviewer. But today, OnePlus could not have better timing. With more flagships approaching and surpassing the $1,000 tier, you get a whole lot of phone for a lot less than what's normally sold for this kind of performance. That's always been key to the OnePlus discussion. But this is an idea that's starting to resonate more outside of tech enthusiast circles, and more consumers are starting to take notice. Who'd have thunk it? I like purple. As always, thanks so much for watching. Uh, we've got plenty more to chat about with OnePlus. I'll have a link down below this video description. Also, if you're considering shopping one, uh, you know, maybe uh, check out that promo code I've got and you can uh, pick yourself up some accessories like those USB-C bullets. Also, if you wanna see how these cameras perform, I have a full camera deep dive on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. And I also shot a smaller update to talk about OnePlus's Nightscape low light photography mode. All right, that Patreon project, it's proving to be a fun little tech community and patrons also get early access to videos like these. Again, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. I hope you'll check it out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters, the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.